By swearing nothing's off limits and that there's no limits to his swearing, Australia's cheeky comic genius Jim Jeffries has taken America by storm. Not since Paul Hogan's Crocodile Dundee has there been a true blue larrikin as popular across the Pacific as Jim. He's a wild man who was renowned for his wild antics until, as Liam Bartlett discovered, an English beauty tamed the Aussie beast. <laughs> I'll try to be as funny as possible, but, you know, if I'm boring, I'm boring, man. Can I pull you up if you're boring? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm all right with that. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a bit of Jim Jeffries. Why would you say that joke? Bane of my whole existence is sound guys, and none of you do a uniform thing. Some of you shove down your underwear. Surely we must have some union where we agree on this. He's a bit of a contradiction, our Jim. <laughs> He's full on. Controversial, yeah. outrageous, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, full of expletives. Yeah, yeah. Career's crushing it, obviously. Full frontal. I have to talk about having sex with my wife on stage. No, <laughs> well, you don't have to talk about well, it. But he's also a soft-hearted family man. Hello. Oh, hello, How husband. <laughs> an outspoken bloke who is also an introvert. I get more nervous talking to you one-on-one -on -one than I would performing in front of 10,000 people. He enjoys the applause. Down, down, down. And he loves making people laugh. Not bad for a boy who originally trained to be an opera singer. What was it about the notion of being a, a stand-up comedian for a job, for a living, that attracted you in the first place? It's the only thing I, I ever passionately wanted to do. I studied musical theatre at university and then I went into the opera singing course and that was all just me buying time until I could be a stand-up comedian. I'm Jim Jeffries, your favourite comedian. But was it the fun, was it the humour, or was it the audience? No, it was the only... It, it, look, it was girls. It was meeting girls, and it was getting attention. This is our struggling comedian's party, right? It's 5 a.m. Monday. Nurses will be finishing their shifts soon. <laughs> Maybe if we just stand out the front of the ER, they'll appreciate seven funny guys. I was the class clown, and that's how I got attention, and that's how I, I, I met different people and made friends and whatever. Everything good I ever got out of life, I got from making people laugh. Jim Jeffries is his stage name. He was born Jeffrey Nugent, and he and his two brothers were raised on Sydney's North Shore by their mum and dad, Caroline and Gary. Bullied at school, comedy was his escape. And in his late teens, Jim got serious about turning his jokes into a full-time job. I, I did three open mic spots when I was 17. So my dad drove me down to the comedy club and there was maybe six people in the audience and I, it went so bad. And uh, I got in the car afterwards and my dad said, uh, he goes, uh, you're a good kid and you, you've got a lot of good talents and a lot of people like you, you're a nice fella, but uh, I, I don't think this is for you you'll be good at other things. And I remember <laughs> taking that so to heart, like, I failed. I, it's, it's just something I always dreamt of doing and I couldn't do it, you know? But it was always at the back of my mind, so I knew I wanted to still work in entertainment. So he went cross-country, from Sydney to Perth, to train at the same place Hugh Jackman graduated from, Whopper, the Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts. Jim had all the moves except the right ones. The reason I, I failed at Whopper was because I couldn't pass bloody tap. I kept on failing me tap lessons, you know, all the time. Every time I had a tap exam, I couldn't do me time steps properly. I still can't do them. I remember I had a wooden board and I bought some tap shoes and I would just practice in my apartment in Perth and I'd, I'd go like this and just in my underwear because I didn't have air conditioning. I was hopeless. That's, I... the, that's the Kmart version of uh, Risky Business. <laughs> Just take those old records off the I went into comedy whilst at university. And, and, and Gary Who, do you remember Gary Who? He was a, a comic on the telly. Guys, 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 guys. Guess what? And he saw me in a club in Perth and he said, do you want to come on tour with me? And I quit university that day. That was it. And we were driving in a car out to Kalgoorlie to do gigs. And I was like, oh, this is heaven. I think I was getting 50 bucks or something, but I thought, this is the life. And I didn't tell my parents for another six months. I kept it to myself. I've got to give my parents this. 
The amount of jokes that I've told about them on stage, they never once have said a word about it. My dad comes up to me and goes, I didn't like that bit about me and the two gay fellas. I didn't. <laughs> and I've said some pretty awful things about my parents, but they've taken it in pretty good jest. My mother's a great big fat woman. She'd always be in the kitchen going, go get the washing off the line, make sure you fold everything. Whenever we got her underwear off the line, we would get on either end of it and fold it like a flag. <laughs> You're the youngest of what? Three. Three, yeah. One of your brothers is an investment banker. The other one's a police inspector. He is, yeah. That's right, yeah. Police inspector, yeah. <laughs> In our mother's eyes, if you had to rank each three of her children, what would you rank us? Oh, uh, you're ranked number one. Because I'm famous, and famous people are more important than cops. That's right. <laughs> my, my my cop brother's a serious fellow, as a cop should be. What if there was cocaine in the vehicle with you right now? Right now? You wouldn't arrest that person, would you? <laughs> Jim's first American special was in 2009. Got offered a HBO special in America, and then my record label here went, oh, you can't do that. You're contracted to us. And I went, ah, oh, that's a shame. And <laughs> then I got on a plane and I went to America. You weren't hugely famous in Australia, but then you, you've come to America, which I would have thought is a much harder market, and you're more famous here than you are back home. Well, I came here through necessity. It wasn't like, goodbye, Australia, I'm going to have to get famous in, a, in America. I was doing it because I couldn't get famous in Australia. And then uh, my record label here sued me for 200,000 pounds. But it doesn't matter, doesn't matter, because HBO paid me $50,000. So <laughs> you gotta spend money to make money. It's like Margot Robbie couldn't stay on Neighbours. She had to go off and be Margot Robbie. <laughs> That's pretty good. And you, I had you've to, just compared yourself yeah, I just to Margot compared Robbie. Myself, I, no, no, better looking. Better That's looking. I'm better looking than Margot Robbie. I've got a bit more something. Got it? Now, f*** off. You wait till you see a scene with me naked in the bathtub talking about e-commerce. You'll, 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 you'll enjoy it. Wonder if you can see me in the pic. Thunder from down under. There's a... <laughs> I'm the least tanned person that's ever come out of Australia. <laughs> this is the thing about being Australian in, in America. They like us. When Americans are abroad, you're just pointing out shit you see. You're just walking around going, oh, this is great, look at that, that's a chair right there. Okay. I think we sound like friendly people. People like us. And I said... And they certainly like Jim's comedy, <laughs> even though it can get very personal. Often very personal about himself. But please know that you're wrong, right? <laughs> I've been taking pills to keep the hair on my head for 15 years now, right? And I, I've got a crap hair. I, I mean, you go on about your hair, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done the hair. I've had a transplant on the hair. I did the teeth. I got the fake teeth. I had a bit of lipo on my chin. If I, if I wasn't on TV, I wouldn't do any of those things. I would just... I would be fat as all balls, I would. I'd be big as a house. The reason I, I lose weight is because of you the general public and your comments on the internet. But it's TV keeps you looking good. Could you imagine how shocking you would look if you weren't on the telly? <laughs> like, how, like how rough you'd let things get? <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I don't know. What are, you, what, are you trying to look good for your wife? No. no well, you know, I, well, there, you know, there probably is a bit of that. No, no, I'm no. That's no. human, that's human. It's telly, it's telly, man. <laughs> it's the telly. You, you come in, you're wearing, <laughs> you're wearing crocodile skin boots with a well, matching belt. Well, yeah. you know. Yeah, you look good. But because they're in their 20s, the, the leg's up to here. Because <laughs> it's very important to that generation that we see their ankles. <laughs> you look like... <laughs> Mm. So there's a certain swear word that I can say that no other comic in America can say. The C-bomb. Yeah, yeah. I'm famous for two things in America, saying the C-bomb and, and a routine on gun control. Hey, stop, boys. There's still shooting going on. The worst primary school shooting in American history. These tragedies must end, and to end them, we must change. In 2012, a gunman took 28 lives at Sandy Hook School in Newtown, Connecticut it would lead to one of Jim's most powerful routines. Don't give me this other bullshit. The main one is, I need to protect me, I need to protect my family. Really? Is that why they're called assault rifles? Is it? Never heard of these protection rifles you speak of? I remember after Sandy Hook happened, I, I was on set of a TV show and I, I, was, I was talking to John Ratzenberg, who's uh, Cliff Clavin from Cheers. He was on my sitcom, the mailman from Cheers, right? 
mean, we're the kind of guys who knows what the other guy's gonna say before he even says it, huh? And he turned to me and he went, uh, none of this uh, would have happened if those teachers had guns. Like that, right? And I remember getting into a bit of an argument with him and then I talked to him for about three, four days arguing about guns and how he thought it was better to have one on you at all times and all that type of stuff. What world do you live in where you're constantly f***ing ready? <laughs> you think that people are coming to murder your family? How many f***ing enemies do you have? And by the end of the four days, the routine was, was basically written, but I'm very... I, out of everything I've ever done, I'm, I'm most proud of that routine because I'm a responsible gun owner. I keep my guns locked in a safe. Yeah. Then there's no f protection! <laughs> the sad thing that it, about that routine is, though, if I wake up in the morning and I turn my phone on and there's a whole lot of notifications about my name, that means that someone's been shot. Mm -hmm. And so, so the, that routine gets bigger each time there's, there's been a massacre, and that's not... It's not a good thing. Next. Oh, hello, hello. husband. <laughs> I'm obsessed with him. <laughs> and I think she and has a nice ass. And he thinks I have a nice ass. So That's all... what I bring to the table. Best 60 bucks I ever spent. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it Yeah, that's a, an authentic Australian Pac-Man machine. It's all Australian in this room. The first thing I ever did when I had uh, my, I saw my first special was I bought myself a pinball machine. It may seem surprising, but for a man who is a comic wizard, Jim Jeffries sometimes gets a low score, at least in his own mind. I'm, I'm a... A real worrier. Yeah, I always worry. You know, I've always had depression and and, uh, and had to deal with that. You know, I go in and out of therapy and all that type of stuff. I've always been a real worrier, yeah. And you're worried about what I get, people I get, think. I get more nervous talking to you one-on-one -on -one than I would performing in front of 10,000 people. That They're just a sea of people. They're just an emotional sound that comes back at you. Well, you don't look nervous. No, I know that's the whole thing. I, 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 I I'm probably coming off of a rambling idiot. Uh, well, you're not. You're not rambling. I, I was going. You're I was, not a rambling idiot. I was, was, was going to have an edible before this in case I could be more chatty, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't do it. This is legal in California because uh, I, I don't drink Aaron, anymore. I, I, I mentioned this to you, but I don't drink. You don't drink at all. I don't drink at all. I, don't, I haven't touched alcohol in over two years. Why? Um, why did you do that? Because I had enough. Um, it wasn't making me the best parent, it wasn't making me the best husband, and it just wasn't making me happy anymore. I'm a five in the looks department, but because I'm on TV, I had sixes and sevens, but because I'm an alcoholic, I fours and threes. I will say this, best shows I ever did, I was drunk. Well, that's not a great ad for sobriety. But the worst shows I ever did, I was drunk. Right. I, I, I was I was drunk. I was I was embarrassed. But no booze at all, now. Cult, no booze at all. Cult no boo booze at all. And I do great shows. I just do. Because you're in control. Because I'm in control. He may be in control, but he's not a control freak. Hello, Toronto. Jim's goal is to give people hey, a laugh. No more f masks. Not a lecture. I'll tell you who's going to miss the masks: chicks with good bodies but shit faces. Look, I I I I truly don't need people to learn anything at my shows. I, I want people to laugh. That's about here we go. Here's me boy here. We'll just we'll just pause for a Hello mate. Hi Dad. How are you son? Good. Well, how was school? Good. Yeah you can sit and watch or uh, uh, actually no I don't want to watch the interview. I might say something stupid mate. <laughs> yeah. It's it, it's funny because me me boy here and I don't mind this being in the interview it's it's funny because you can get judged for being who you are, and that can affect your family, you know? Mm. All the dirty stories, that sort of stuff. I have to talk about having sex with my wife on stage, and then I have to go have... <laughs> you don't have to talk about well, it. Well, I, I don't have sex with anyone else anymore. So <laughs> that's like, unless you want... How am I going to write material? That's how I used to write material, right? Sure. So I have to talk about my wife, but then I have to sit down and have a meal with my in-laws and just go... Hello. And then we go... It's... Oh, hello, husband. <laughs> Taisy, we really need to put you on camera because, um, seriously, because no one will believe it otherwise. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
That's success right there. There we go, Jim. That's right there. <laughs> Jim. That's how you know you made it. In another life, Jim's wife, Taisy Lawrence, was a star on British television. My wife's the sweetest lady in the world. I, I'm very lucky, man. I'm very lucky. The, the, the best thing that ever happened to me was meeting this one. They met five years ago in LA and fell in love over a mutual hate. The opinionated British broadcaster, Piers Morgan. On the Bill Maher show, I did tell Piers Morgan to F off and g I gave him the finger. You're like, losing your audience. He was not right losing my because audience. Because you're sounding unpleasant. Am I and you're also it? not <laughs> basic. My wife hates Piers Morgan. And when she found out I was the guy who told Piers Morgan to F off, she remembered seeing on the show, she was ten times more attracted <laughs> to me. So that, that is the whole reason she fancies me to this day. There is no Muslim <laughs> ban. If there was, oh, 80 off. Oh, Sorry, why don't we <laughs> off? He makes me laugh more than anyone, obviously. Like, I, I get to laugh so much every day. Um, but, yeah, he's also just the most... the sweetest, loveliest person I've ever met, and... Yeah, I'm obsessed with him. <laughs> and I think and he has think a nice I, ass. And he thinks I have a nice ass. So That's all, what I bring to the table. It's all even. We got married during COVID. We went and did it in a little uh, Vegas chapel. A Vegas chapel. chapel. The same chapel from the episode of Friends where uh -huh. Ross and Rachel get married. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Rachel! Oh, it's the best 60 bucks I ever spent. Yeah, it's... <laughs> 60. Yeah, 60 yeah. bucks. I think it was more like $100. No, that's if you paid for a song and all that type oh, of stuff. Right. We got the base package. I'm not bloody getting them with their upgrades, yeah. their upsells. We get married in Vegas. <laughs> and then uh, my wife gets pregnant on the wedding night. Probably mine. <laughs> um. For now, Taisy has put her career on hold to raise their young son, Charlie, and her stepson, Hank. Meanwhile, Jim's career continues to soar. But in this censorious age, he worries that the woke wowsers may come for him yet. I think we get a bad rap, stand-up comedians. We're very low on the entertainment ladder. And we shouldn't be. It's like, you go to the Oscars, these bloody actors, right? These actors, they get a trophy for doing the best dramatic whatever. There's no comedy award there. Yet, who hosts the Oscars? Comedians, because they can't do it because they're boring. And then we make jokes about one of them and we get slapped. <laughs> Screw those people. <laughs> oh. Comedians are, at the moment, we're sort of enemy number one. We're the first people to be cancelled. We're the first people to get in trouble for saying things, you know? Isn't that part of your target as well, even subconsciously? Because you're not really doing your job properly if you're not pushing that line. Uh, I, li I, like, I like a little bit of trouble. Is that when you got smacked in the head? Where you... Oh, hang on. Oh! Whoa. I got smacked in the head at the Manchester Comedy Store, and that was... I was the one who released the footage of that. Whoa. Multiple times. Whoa. If you don't want a comedian to talk about your issue, don't complain when they talk about your issue because that's going to make more comedians do it. Don't go, don't push that button. And I have no problem with trans people. But I do like press. So, here we go. I don't have any problem with trans people, but now there's this flag, don't talk about trans. Of course we're going to talk about it. That's you've a just, hot topic, you've right? Just, yeah, that's a hot topic right now. That's the one. And they're going, why do you need to talk about this? Because you're saying we can't. You keep saying we can't. That's why there's the need to talk about it. Jim's most recent career change is not only a return to the country of his birth, but a trip down memory lane. I just love game shows, man. I used to watch Ian Turpy, Price is Right. I have probably my first emotional feelings about Delvin Delaney. <laughs> like, these are happy times from my childhood. Welcome back again. Hello, everyone. I met Larry Emder the other day. It was like, it was like meeting Elvis. <laughs> how, how, how good's Larry? Larry would be happy about it. No, that. Larry's good, man. Larry, he, he, he smiles the whole way. You never, you've never seen him look at someone and just go like that. He keeps... All right, well, the next question up, here we go. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> I, I want to I wanna emulate Larry Emder. That's He's brilliant. my hero now. How do I gauge my success? All, all I really care about is that my kids like me and my wife likes me, you know what I mean? Woo, it's so Do you want to come back home eventually? I would love to. Yeah, I'd love to. I, 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 um... 
I'd like to retire in Australia. Good on you. But that leaves one last problem, though not insurmountable. Here we are sitting in this beautiful house. You've got a, you know, great career, beautiful wife, but it's a long way from Jeff Nugent, isn't it? I changed that name because the first time I walked on stage and they said, please welcome to the stage Godfrey Nugent. <laughs> and I thought, I thought, Godfrey Nugget's not going to cut it. Same with me. I changed my name and now I'm stuck yeah. with it. My full name's Anastasia Danraj, but my stage name, I go by Taisy. Everyone calls me Taisy, Taisy Lawrence. Oh, this is getting very confusing. I know. I, know. I, know. Oh, I, can't, um, I can't change my name again. We're, we're a couple of frauds. We are. All of which means it's full-on confusion boarding the flight back to Australia when Dad, <laughs> Mum and Son all check in now. Under different <laughs> names. So the license, they go, Excuse me, why is this child with you? And then I go, Didn't pull out. <laughs> and I go, and You all left me hanging, right? <laughs> like, fing it hell. Fing it hell. I couldn't have delivered a dryer. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, so that's it. Right, yeah. It's well, not easy, this job, you know. Not easy this job. I feel like I've been teasing you too much. I feel bad now.